know about the situation there on the ground right now? We know, Robin, that uh, there are protesters on the streets of Khartoum right now because they have been told by the Sudan Professionals Association to go out on the streets to protect against what they're calling a military coup. Now, I need to be very clear. We don't know a whole lot of information. We know that the home of Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok appears to be surrounded by the military. It is not clear if they are protecting him or if he is under house arrest. We also hear that several government ministers, including members of the Sovereignty Council, have been arrested, according to eyewitnesses, according to some local media reports. We're working to confirm the details here because what we know is that a month ago, there was an attempted coup in Sudan, which was thwarted. And at the time, Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok blamed it on forces loyal to the ousted president, Omar al-Bashir. And he told me, the prime minister at the time, that because of the successes they're making in Sudan, there some of the old forces are nervous because they dream of coming back. So this morning, people on the streets of Khartoum trying to understand what's happening because the internet has been blocked in Robin. Uh, has been blocked there, Robin. We hear from NetBlocks. This is the organization that tracks um, internet blockages around the world. They say they're only having 34% of people who are online. And that tracks with some of the reporting we've been hearing from eyewitnesses telling CNN that they cannot go on WhatsApp or um, just access the internet regularly. Yeah, and just talk us through this power sharing agreement that we've been seeing uh, for the last two years and, 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 and how, um, how, how tightly knit it's been or perhaps how much it is frayed. It's frayed a lot more than tightly knit, Robin. Mm. This is a very a power sharing agreement that's on, on, on very much on, on tenter hooks because there's some mistrust between the civilian elements and the military. And what happened is in 2019, when Omar al-Bashir was ousted after months of protests, and then this transitional agreement came into effect, what is supposed to happen is there's supposed to be steps until a return to full civilian rule. For instance, there should have been a legislative body of some kind, a parliament, which should have been in place by now. That has not happened. And it should all be working to an election by the end of 2023, it appears not to be working. There's also some disquiet within Sudan about some of the economic reforms that have been carried out by Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok and this transitional government, which um, have really crippled some people and they don't like it. But what Sudan is trying to do is to get some kind of debt relief from the International Monetary Fund. So he, the Prime Minister sees this as a necessary evil. And he understands this because he's he used to be a prominent economist before this moment, but now with these um, tensions between the military and the civilian elements, this is what appears to be leading to this moment where people are on the streets trying to protect what they're calling a military coup, according to the Sudan Professionals Association. This organization was behind the popular protest in 2019 that led to the ouster of, uh, of Omar al-Bashir, the very important to the democratic transition in Sudan. Yeah, and made up of, of, of middle class professionals and the youth uh, and certainly uh, ha have ha have charted this this very shaky uh, two years since since Bashir was 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 overturned. Just talk us through this information again. Various top government officials CNN is hearing have reportedly been arrested and taken to prison by men wearing military police uniforms. This is according to eye eyewitnesses. Just talk us through what that might mean and, and, and do we know who these government officials are? Which are, which, which are they on the civilian side or the military side of, of, the, of the government? Do we know that? Many of the names we're seeing appear to be on the civilian side. Okay. Some of them are members of the Sovereignty Council, so that's what we know at this stage. And again, we're hearing that the Prime Minister's home has been surrounded. We don't know if they're protecting him or he's under house arrest, but these several ministers who are well known in Sudan who are allegedly arrested as we speak right now, speak to what people see as the growing tensions between the military and the civilian government and, and the civilians that are that form part of the transitional administration in Sudan. So it's hard for us to exactly make out what is going on with, because we haven't heard a statement yet from the rulers in Sudan, from the prime minister, from Al Burhan, the general who is sort of the figurehead of the military. So we're waiting to see if there will be any kind of statement. Usually when some of these things happen, Robin, you, you and I have covered many of these things. You might see many military fatigues go up on TV and make an announcement. Nothing of that sort has happened. OK, you'll monitor for us there on the ground uh, in Nairobi. Appreciate it. Larry Madoa, thank you. So according to the